Welcome to another Demarcation Media Top 10 video. Between 2020 and 2023, Mega has put out a lot of sets, but even with that, it's been kind of a rough couple of years for Mega. It's hard to find sets. Halo has not been very popular, so stores don't want to stock it. And it's been, in general, just kind of a harder time to be a Mega fan. However, there has been a lot of good stuff that Mega's done. So I want to take this video to look back and we are going to look at the top 10 sets from 2020 until now. Especially now that this uh, year is coming to an end. We only have December or depending on when this video releases, we only will have December. So I just want to look through and find the top 10 best sets from 2020 until now. So let's jump right in. Coming in at the number 10 spot is the Mongoose Outriders set. Now, before I explain why, I just want to give a quick disclaimer. This list only includes the standard sets. This does not include things like Halo Heroes. This does not include blind bags. This does not include the Xbox 360 because that's kind of in a category of its own. We are only going to be focusing on the Halo Mega normal sets. So. This comes in the number 10 spot because it has a fantastic selection of figures and a really, really interesting mongoose. The four figures included in this set are a Brute Miner in blue, a Golden Elite Ultra, an Anubis with Scorpion Punch, and a Silver Uroi. This whole lineup is just fantastic. All these figures look great. The Brute is probably the least interesting figure of the whole set, but he still looks fantastic. He has a great print on that chest plate, and he comes with a scrap cannon, which is new. At least it was new for this set. The Elite Ultra introduced that whole harness in gold, which is great, and it has the carbine, or sorry, not the carbine, the uh, pulse rifle from Infinite. And then this Anubis, I mean, I've talked about this Anubis before on the channel. It's just really good. I love the way the coating looks. I love the purple visor, the cybernetic leg. It's all great. And then the Uroi, it looks very nice in this silver. Plain silver, yeah, maybe you could call it a little bit boring, but it works for the whole armor look. And then the green visor pops really nicely. And he has a Ravager, which is a fairly new piece, and it just looks really good. This whole lineup is fantastic. The Mongoose uses the citrus ink coating, which is very bright. It has this more of a sand green, which is kind of cool. Um, and there was also optional parts from the two Spartan armor packs, Decisive Engagement and Bizarre Battleground to modify this. I know not everybody loves the infinite um, Mongoose design from Mega, but I find this suspension so much fun to just drive around. You can even make the whole vehicle turn. And the coating honestly has grown on me. The orange stands out in a pretty nice way, I think. And then the green looks really good. If you didn't like the orange, you could just swap it out for the silver bars and that would look great too. Not for everybody, but it is unique and different. The reason this set only gets the number 10 spot is because it has been ridiculously hard to get, super elusive, and Frankly, if you have one, then you have gotten really lucky because getting it is a royal pain. Great figures, really unique mongoose, but such a pain to get that it earns the number 10 spot. The number nine spot belongs to a set from the first wave of Halo Infinite sets, the Recon Getaway. This set is, I, I, it's, I feel like it's a classic at this point. Even though it only came out a few years ago, it's kind of a classic. There are a few problems with it that we'll talk about, but it's kind of a classic. So let's jump into it. The set included two of the new Halo Infinite Marines and a Elite Miner, as well as a Grunt. All four of these figures are incredibly army buildable and the Marines introduce some really neat new pieces, including removable helmets. The Elite is very similar to the Clash on the Rings one, but it's a slightly, slightly different color and it doesn't have print on the arm. And then of course a Grunt is a Grunt and it's always good to get more Grunts. The Marines did have the odd um, use of the Call of Duty legs, which made them taller. It did make them look pretty nice, but it did make them taller, which was rectified later, but this set just now has the tall Marines. The Elite 
looks really good. That plasma rifle does not look really good. And the grunt, again, is just a grunt. It's hard to go wrong with a grunt. This was the first iteration that we saw of the Halo Infinite Mongoose, and it's trying to escape from me. And I really like it. The metallic green works pretty well on this particular one. The bull bar on the front, this like silver thing here is good. The handlebars are a little funky, but I overall I think it's really good. And I really love that suspension. The one downside, which you probably noticed earlier in the past shot, the tires can split over time. I've had this built since I got it um, way back in 2020 and it's splitting now. So that's something I'm going to have to glue, which is a bummer. But other than that, it's really a fantastic little vehicle and I love just zooming it around. And you can indeed fit both Marines on there. The great thing about this set is that it was hugely available. Everywhere had it, you could get it for a while there, it was on sale too. Like, so you, I've heard of some people that found it for like five bucks. I think 15 was retail, maybe 20. Um, I've seen both and that was really solid. Um, on top of that, it's a perfect, perfect little battle in a box. You have pretty much evenly matched sides. Yes, the UNSC has the vehicle, but the enemy has the elite. So. You could get this set and you instantly have yourself a little battle and I think that's fantastic. Because of that, it earns itself the number nine spot. In the number eight spot, we have the Banished Garrison Pack. This set received quite a bit of criticism for not being banished only, but I still think it holds up as one of the best figure packs that Mega has done to date. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at those figures. This set included six figures, two of which were UNSC, and then the other four were various banished units. Um, there were no doubles, which is a little bit of a bummer, but for what we got, it's really good. The Marine in this set not only introduced the new masked head, but the Spec Ops look is absolutely fantastic. I love the bulkier shoulders and the fact that he's got a Hydra. The Spartan is a great pair. It matches, oh, he matches so well the armor colors and he had the Commando, which was new at the time. The Chieftain here, all in gold, was a great stand-in for Bassus, um, even though he's not exact, he's pretty close. And he uses the original Halo Wars um, Broodhead. This Elite is one of the best banished Elite figures Mega has ever made, in my opinion. He's just simple, clean, and the tiny bit of print on the front of the chest plate works so well. The Brute is a jump pack Brute, and the red just looks really good. And I was particularly impressed with how the chest plate matches with the plastic color red, because that is a print, entirely a print. And then we also got a variant of Old Victor. This one is a much more banished looking one, and he's loaded up with shock rifles, because Mega loves giving us shock rifles. In terms of a build, you really didn't get much. You got a rocket pod, which was a couple different colors, and you got some spike grenades. But it is a figure pack, so that makes sense. I'm still firmly of the opinion that this set is better for including UNSC because you get a little conflict to kind of play out. Um, this is not a hugely army buildable set because you don't want tons of chieftains. You probably don't want tons of Spartans. Everybody else is army buildable. So, that made it not be great in that regard, but I think as a standalone set, it's a great way to start a collection, especially a Halo Infinite related collection. And it just has so many nice figures and it looks great on display. It wasn't hugely available. It was a little bit spotty in terms of finding it in stores. I never did find it in stores. So because of that, it's not higher on this list and it earns the number eight spot. Number seven goes to the Warthog Rally. I gotta say, this one also kind of feels like a classic, even though it's only from 2020. This was a hugely available set, just like the um, Recon uh, Getaway. And it just is a perfect little set to start your collection with, because you have everything you need to have a Halo Infinite little mini display. For 30 bucks, you got four figures, a Marine, a Halo Infinite Master Chief, and two of the ugliest jackals you will ever see in your life. 
this lineup introduced a lot of new stuff like the marine the marine had brand new parts he is too tall but you know that's just how it was then this chief while he didn't really have new pieces was a great new combo a perfect color and was overall just really nice yeah the shoulders were not really accurate and there was some things that could have been done better but he did a lot of stuff differently and he was just really nice to get to this day he is still one of the cleanest halo infinite chiefs and then these jackals were the new halo infinite ones and they are horrifying they are genuinely are horrifying and that's perfect that is what you want to see from a jackal while this hog isn't technically accurate to infinite because the infinite one doesn't actually have these bars it's really nice mega introduced a new type of suspension to replace the old tube suspension and it works really well you can rock it back and forth and it honestly looks pretty nice too i mean look at that the only downside is it uses a rubber band which could eventually degrade over time um, got the turret on the back of course this turntable is a little sticky for some reason but we have the unsc symbol on there it's just a really sleek hog it just looks nice it's just it's just a nice hog if i had to only have one warthog i feel like i'd want to go with this one because it just it looks so iconically halo i don't know something about this particular build just really does it for me I would say the only real downside of this set is for collectors who may have already a million hogs, but I feel like this Warthog was so different from previous Mega Warthogs that it made getting it still feel fresh and new even if you had other Warthogs. And for 30 bucks, it was really hard to beat. And the fact that it was available everywhere was also hard to beat. So with that in mind, it gains the number seven spot. 2022 was a little bit more sparse or i should say actually a lot bit more sparse than 2020 was and even 2021 in terms of halo sets but mega still gave us some pretty epic sets one of them being the hornet recon this guy comes in the number six spot and this is a fantastic absolutely fantastic halo 3 set this set only included two figures, which was a little bit of a bummer, especially for the $20 price tag. But the two figures that we did get are so, so good. First off, Sergeant Stacker, a kind of obscure named character, I guess. I, it's kind of obscure. But if you played Halo 3 enough, you will know who he is. Um, and Mega did a banger job with this whole figure. The newer Halo 3, like, color that they picked for the marine armor is great and then his face is just so well done that beard it's just fantastic he comes with a magnum and then this odst this is an odst captain as signified by the red on his arms and wow this is just a pretty much perfect figure the only thing that is a downside is he's missing some gray print on the chest that the box showed that he would have but the purple visor the red on the shoulders the camo the new backpack it made him so good i still think this is one of the best odsts mega has ever made the hornet is pretty dang good too it's a lot smaller than previous hornets it looks more to scale there is little handles on the side for a figure to hold on to. We've got the little guns on top. It has this funny gimmick that you can turn the rotors like that. You can also just turn the rotors manually if you want to. Um, new canopy piece. The whole design looks really good. It was a bit of a pain to build though, and a lot of people struggled with it because the parts are basically pushed to their extreme to get this perfect slope to work. And also getting the glass into this piece it was a pain and people tended to break it but it is really nice we've got a little printed console in there and you can fit a figure for this you'll use sergeant stacker it is a bit of a bummer that we didn't get a pilot and we got a named character instead but it is a named character that we probably wouldn't have gotten otherwise so that's kind of a trade-off Despite having a small figure selection and a slightly finicky lower build, when this is finished, it's a great set. It could have used a grunt or a pilot or something, but for $20, it feels 
it feels okay for how high quality the figures are. And right now, or at least I should say, as of the time of the recording of this video, you can get it on Amazon for $18. And I would say that is a pretty darn good deal. This Hornet looks so much better than the previous one. And I would say it looks a lot better than the other ones too, in terms of scaling. The other or the older ones tended to be massive. And this is also just very swooshable. It feels very solid. Yes, if you set it down hard, you may break the landing gear, but holding it up here, swooshing it around, it feels really good. And I don't feel like I'm gonna break it at all. This gimmick, it's interesting. I could have done without it, but it's interesting. It doesn't really detract from the model at all. Really good set. If you don't already have one, highly recommend it if you are a Halo 3 fan. Number five goes to the Arbiter's Quest set. This was a kind of a surprise, honestly, a Halo 2 set out of nowhere and with no humans, which this does not happen often that we get a mega set with no human figures at all. Despite having an almost identical price point to the Hornet Recon, we actually get three figures in this lineup. Sesa Refumi, who has been updated with the new hands, or I should say the new for elite hands. These are Teeny Tweet Ninja Turtle hands. Really nice print all around. Looks like he could be a Halo Heroes figure and he doesn't want to stand up. For the first time ever, we got a Heretic Elite Miner. Basically the same getup as Sesa, but with gold all around and an energy sword. And then we got another Arbiter. This Arbiter has a very, very heavy wash and I love it. It's so good. This might be my favorite Arbiter figure of all time. He's just pretty much perfect. I really like it. That carbine right there is a bit too bright and toyish looking, but the rest of the figure is absolutely fantastic. The Banshee included in this set is not a new design, it's actually one that came in Mega's updated Aerial Ambush set, but it is a slightly different color. This canopy is more of a purple to match the in-game one, and the purple itself I think might be slightly different. The canopy looks fantastic. Obviously you can hinge it open to get inside. There's a little control screen in there. You do get this flight stand with it. The guns on the front are big brick built things with prints on them, but you can still fire stuff off because there are two shooters hidden in the middle there. The real kind of gimmick with this though, was that you got this little barrier for your figures to take cover behind, but you also got this canopy in gold. And with this, you could switch out the parts and make yourself a heretic banshee. Now the heretic banshee is really not that accurate because it's missing all of the like techie details. Whoa, come back here. But it is a cool gimmick and it is a neat thing to be able to do. I think it was a great idea on Mega's part and I would love to see more builds like it. Because of how unique and different this set is, it gets the number five spot. And I still think it's a really, really solid set. And it's honestly not as talked about as I would have thought. It's just really solid. And while not being army buildable, it's a great, easy, semi-cheap way to get Arbiter and Sesa and that heretic. Oh boy, this is a big one. This is number four, the Pelican Inbound. So this set, um, it kind of has a special spot for me, but also it's just the best Pelican that Mega has made. In my opinion, it's the biggest. It doesn't have as much troop capacity as most of us would like, but it is so big. And then we have an interesting selection of figures to go with it. For a $160 set, three figures is a little weird, especially since one of them is a hunter. The figure selection is honestly my biggest gripe with the whole set. We should have gotten two of these hunters. These are very rare now. Trying to get a pair is nearly impossible without paying a ridiculous amount or just straight up buying a second copy of the set. But the hunter looks absolutely fantastic. We get a bro hammer. He's got his helmet. His face looks pretty decent under there. The main downside for this guy is that some of them are taller. I believe that Mega did do an updated version that had the shorter legs. But this harness here, this is honestly a bad harness. It likes to just break off. I would recommend just snipping them eventually because you can see here they're starting to dry rot and just stick out. So that's a bummer. Chief is very interesting. He has like silver edging for battle damage on a bunch of his armor, which is pretty cool. 
I think it's an interesting concept. This one doesn't have the greatest visor ever, but it's a, it's a pretty cool concept. It just, we really needed another hunter at least. The Pelican is definitely the star of this set. I mean, it is the Pelican inbound and it served a huge role in Halo Infinite. This was what brought Chief all over the ring. This is how Brohammer found Chief. It's just really cool. We get the moving wings. We can angle it around. They're ratcheted so that they won't just fall. Do the posing with it. There's a ramp, slightly funny looking ramp, but a ramp nonetheless. And you can do this. This allows you to get full access to the interior such as it is. Fold the wings up like that. Pop this piece off and boom. Wait, almost, almost, almost. Bear with me for a second. We're almost there. Yeah, we'll just take those off for now. There we go. And then you can swing it open and get full access to the interior. We have a seat, We've got a little thing for holding chief. We've got some stuff on the walls and then access to the cockpit in there, which can fit bro hammer. Uh, yes, there could have been more storage capacity for troops. That would have been great. But for what it is and for the price point, I would say that this is a very, very solid set. And recently, it has gone on sale and it was like $64 on Mattel Creations thanks to a sale that Mattel was running. That's a great deal. And honestly, even 160, I don't find any complaints with it. It is a beefy build. It's heavy, but it also still feels good to swoosh around and just mess around with. My only real complaint is the fact that the metallic green is super inconsistent and some things will be lighter than others and some will be darker. That's really my only real complaint aside from the storage capacity. Like I said, this set holds a special spot for me because this was actually a set that Mega sent to me for review. They sent it to me for free. Um, that's been the only set they've done that for so far. And it was a really cool experience. It got me the chance to review this early and it was just really cool. But, but that aside, I think the Pelican itself is great everybody needs a pelican in their collection i mean it's a pelican it's one of the most iconic halo things everybody needs one and this one is definitely the best there have been plenty of other ones in the past but all of them have been smaller than this this is the biggest and in my opinion the best and because of that it earns the number four spot and the number three slot goes to the infamous falcon sweep set this is basically the ultimate love letter to Halo Reach fans in mega form, which is absolutely fantastic and it's been a nightmare to get from day one. And despite Mega's re-release attempts, it still remains a nightmare to get. The set includes the entirety of Noble Team in some of the best paintwork that we have seen basically anywhere aside from the Halo Heroes line. This is top quality stuff. There was a few weird choices, like for some reason Kat has light gray detailing on her chest plate and the big man has a gray face plate on his helmet. Really have no clue the design thoughts behind that, but the rest of the team looks great. Carter basically looks like he was ripped straight out of the game and look at that visor. Oh, that visor is nice. So nice. June looking sharp. Noble Six, he does not, whoa, buddy, stand up. He does not have the uh, default shoulders, but he still looks pretty darn good. And then of course, Emil looking edgy as always with his Kukri knife. Just such good figures, absolutely fantastic all the way through. As for the builds, you get this little kind of fortification, which is great. Always love getting sandbags. There's a fusion coil there too, and you get a little base plate. And then you get this crate that has the set number on it with a UNSC symbol and the UNSC name. Um, it works great to store your AIs. That is what is in there right now. The AIs do not come with the set. Just wanna make that clear. But that is of course not the main event. The main event, is the Falcon itself as the set name suggests. And this Falcon is a little bit different than the older ones. 
And this is actually the first time we're getting a Falcon for new articulation figures. All the other ones have been for old articulation. This one is scaled up and it's got that same old green though. Looks so good. We have the guns here. The rotors can actually rotate, spin. Looks really good. A lot of print all the way around. We've got just a lot going on. There's prints here. It's kind of dark and subtle, but yeah, it's really good. It's very swooshable too. You can grab it right here, very solid. Swoosh it around. It's just really good. And they were nice enough to allow us to remove these sections, which gives you access to the sides a little bit more to put the figures in. And you can indeed load the whole of Noble Team up into this thing to fly them into battle, which is great. I just really am sad still that this was not more widely available because it really needed to be. It really needed to be. My only, I don't know. I don't know if I have any real complaints. I can nitpick. I mean, these pop off easily and these sections can sag a little bit, but I feel like that's unfair, unfair nitpicking. It's just really good and I love the way that it came out. Again, my only real complaint, even with the set as a whole, is the absolutely disgraceful release. It was, I mean, I, I don't want to be harsh to Mega or, well, I don't mind being harsh to Mattel. Mattel is botching a lot of things. I don't want to be harsh to Mega, but yeah, it was a horrible release and it was a horrible re-release and it left a ton of people disappointed. And it's a huge shame because this is literally the perfect Halo Reach set. It is, it's just, perfect and then it was just not available which really is a bummer but because of how well done this set is it earns the number three spot we are in the top two now and in the second spot number two is a set that came out in 2022 actually so we've got a lot of twos here the odst hive exterminators pack Gotta say, I think this is one of Mega's all-time best sets. All-time best figure packs for sure. I don't know if there's another figure pack that quite tops this one. And, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll kind of justify that a little bit. But, I mean, look at it. Do you have to have more information? I'll give you some more information anyway, though. The set includes four ODSTs, including a named character, Tarkov, from the We Are ODST trailer. Who saw that coming? In addition to the ODSTs, we got these two ugly buggers as kind of an opponent or opponents. Although I don't know that these guys are gonna stand a chance against a full squad of ODSTs. The variants we got in these ODSTs was fantastic. Medic, we've got the heavy weapons guy, we've got the comm specialist, and then the named character that like literally who saw this coming nobody asked for tarkov and we really should have been asking for tarkov because this is a fantastic figure reason why i didn't put the hornet recon odst in the number one spot for all-time odsts because i think it goes to tarkov literally as far as i can find i've researched a bit and there are no other officially licensed tarkov action figures he's just so obscure he only ever showed up in the one trailer the Halo 3 ODST, We Are ODST trailer. And Mega was like, remember that one dude from that one trailer? Yeah, let's make him. And let's make him as good as possible. He's even got the scar on his helmet to be accurate and his name on there. All of these figures have superior detailing. Heck, even the drones have superior detailing. We got a biofoam canister for the first time ever, which is amazing. And Mega even used the Spartan Forum to give this guy a tack pad. The only thing I didn't like about this set was originally this figure had a female torso, which really doesn't work with the ODST chest plate. Other than that, oh, it's so good, so good. This is all we got in terms of the build, but this is pretty significant. Yes, there's sandbags, and I think that's kind of significant because I love the sandbags, but this flag is the flag from the We Are ODST trailer as we see it in the trailer, and it's double-sided. So not only did Mega bring us the most obscure character possible, but we also get this ODST flag that pairs perfectly with him. I honestly just love this set. It's so well done. It's just, yeah, it's ODSTs. I mean, Mega knew we liked ODSTs and they just said, guys, how about we give you the four best ODSTs ever all in one set? 
and the fact that they did um, the silencers, they took the silencers from the Call of Duty line and put it on in place of the original Halo silencer. It's so good. Yeah, I mega just round of applause for this set. It's so freaking well done. I love it. It's just, yeah, I could just keep talking about the set, but I think it's pretty obvious now why this gets the number two spot. I mean, look at this thing. Look at it. It's so perfect. And here we are, number one, the best set from 2020 to 2023 is the Floodgate Firefight. This set is really something special. This is one that we all voted on. I personally voted for this one, and I know a bunch of you guys voted for it as well. And it's a structure which we don't get often, and it has a lot of stuff going on. We got brand new elite combat forms for this set, bunch of popcorns, a exclusive flood splattered chief, and the flood tank made its return all in one set. The combat forms are pretty controversial because of how their neck is done. It allows you to pose it, but it does stick up a bit. A lot of people love it, a lot of people hate it, but you got to admit, at the end of the day, it is great to see that Mega is introducing this in super articulated form. Ten little popcorn boys, all in various shades. We have the three different shades that were introduced fairly recently as of the time of the recording of this video. Chief has his flamethrower, very similar to the Series 5 one. And then he's got flood splats up the side of his armor here and here, which is awesome. The tank is the most detailed tank we've ever gotten. It looks very similar to the Jazzwares figure. We've got like green and kind of a more fleshy color. And of course, a second elite combat form, which is great to see. The build is pretty much just as impressive as the figures. We get the ever iconic forklift with a actual working little forklift thing and you can make a figure drive it. Get this awesome little weapons rack build with some BRs on this side, UNSC symbol, ARs, and then another one. Chain gun on a stand. Fortunately, uh, unfortunately, no handle to allow the figure to operate it, but it's still a great piece to get. Sandbags and a barrier. These are fantastic. They're great for building dioramas or filling out photos. Then we have a Traxxas branded uh, shipping crate here, which is awesome. The door is open and inside we have another container full of weapons, or I should not say full, but there's a spanker and a shotgun in there, which firepower wise, that counts as full. That's also a great piece to have in photos or dioramas. And the build itself is a little bit reminiscent of the old floodgate, um, the original floodgate. We've got a health pack over there. You can spin it all the way around. It looks great from pretty much all angles. We've got a little control room with some printed pieces and there's even a skull down there. I believe that is the fog skull. And this thing can be repositioned. If you take this off, you can hinge it open. And it is big enough that if you remove the crate, you can park a scorpion inside and use it as like a UNSC repair bay. How cool is that? Like literally, how cool is that? And there you have it. That is the top 10 sets from 2020 until 2023. I would love to hear what you guys think. This is your turn. Go down in the comments. Let me know your top 10 list. Where does yours line up with mine? Where do you disagree with mine? Where do you agree with mine? Is there a set that you would have preferred to see make it onto the list? Do you think one of my choices was absolutely dumb and I, you think I should have removed it? I want to hear what you guys think. Let me know. And I just kind of want to take this opportunity to, I mean, to show off, I mean, look at what Mega has done. Yes, a lot of it has been really difficult to get, especially for those of you who are in the UK or Australia. Although you Australians did get that uh, Mongoose Outrider set before any of the rest of us did. But yeah, I, I'm, I know it's been difficult, but Mega has been doing a lot of really amazing stuff. And I think we just need to hold on a little longer. I know that sounds like it's been said for the past three years, which it kind of has since Infinite started going downhill, but we just got to hang in there. 
We got to get the things that we can get without paying the scalpers, not support the scalpers. And I know I've said all of this before, but Mega does awesome stuff. I mean, just look at the layout here. They do awesome stuff. I want to be able to support them doing awesome stuff and it is hard and it's hard for you guys, but we need to try and stick it out as best as we can because then they can make more awesome stuff. And I'm really, really looking forward to seeing what they make in the future. The Halo TV show sets were recently released slash kind of revealed. And while they didn't make it onto this list, there's some very cool things about those. And I'm looking forward to seeing what they will do with sets coming out that are not from source material that's garbage. So I don't know, I'm excited about the future. I don't know if you guys are, but I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited to see what they come up with. And in the meantime, I'm gonna be doing stuff with the figures that I have. I think that's another thing that we forget a lot of times as a community is being a mega fan doesn't mean you have to buy all the new stuff. Look at all these. You may not have these. You may have figures and sets that I don't have, like older ones. Get them out. Make dioramas. Take photos. There's a lot of cool stuff you can do. Heck, just posing them around and putting them on your desk is so much fun. So yeah, that is basically my summary um, of the past couple years. It's been rough, but there's been a lot of cool stuff happening. And that is my top 10. Again, let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Let me know your lineup. What would you put in the number one spot instead of the floodgate? Would you keep it the same? Let me know. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and consider subscribing. And I'll see you next time.